So I don't know about you, but I personally don't like the process of making fusion templates or macros. You have to make sure you select the nodes in the right order that you want the controls to show up in later. Otherwise, you have to either start over or fix this in a code editor. And if you want to have nice, neat, organized labels like this, you have to use the code editor for that as well. So I designed a web app called Macro Lab, and the goal was really to replace this entire process with a much more interactive and intuitive interface. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it works. Okay, so it's really simple to get started. All you need to do is select your nodes, everything minus media out, and just hit copy, and then head into Macro Lab and paste your nodes here and hit start. So I've split this up into three panels. The one all the way to the left replaces the built-in macro editor. So it's very similar. It's gonna have a list of all of your nodes. And when you hover over, you can see their original ID name to the right. And you can click to expand a node to see all of the properties associated with that node. You can also search for a specific node or a control up at the top. And you can see here, I have a text plus node, but I don't have the style text property inside this node. And that's because if I hop back over here in Diffusion and I look at that node, you can see I've applied this follower modifier to the text. And I would never want to expose this property because then the end user might accidentally click this and delete my follower modifier. So Macro Lab has a couple of these guardrails set up to prevent you from accidentally exposing the wrong property. So it's already identified that this text plus node has a modifier and it's positioned it right beneath it. So if I drop this down, this is where I can find my text field where the end user can customize their text. And I'm gonna come back in here to the main text plus, and if I select font, you can see that it automatically brings in the style with it because these are typically associated together. But if you don't want these together, you can individually delete controls if you need to. And it's kind of the same thing with color controls. So you can see if I click red, it automatically brings in all four of my color controls all at once. And the layout tab in the center is interactive. So you can click and drag to reorder different parameters. You can also interact with the actual controls. And when you do this, it will actually write a new default for that property. And most of these controls, when you hover over, you'll see the minimum maximum. So you can kind of set the range. And if you're familiar with the Lua code, you can kind of supervise this in real time just to make sure everything is working properly. As soon as you make any adjustment on a parameter, there's a little reset button. You can reset individual ones, or you can come up here and reset everything back to the original state that it was when you pasted the node tree in here. And probably my favorite feature, and the main reason I started making something like this, is how easy it is to create these labels, uh, which are traditionally only possible with a text editor. So look how easy this is. All you have to do is toggle on the properties you want in your label. You can also hold shift and select a whole range. And then you can come up here and click label selection. And that creates this drop down menu, which I can call name controls. And so now we have a label. And real quick, I'm just going to go ahead and just copy this in and show you if I paste it in. You can see there's our label. And it even has that default text that we entered in. Now, something that you'll see here is that it's added this input, which isn't actually needed for just a title like this. It won't break anything, but if you want to keep it clean, you can also come back in here and see all of these I.O. buttons. This controls your in and outs of your macro, so you can set the output manually. It should automatically find the last node in the tree, but for an input, I actually don't need one because this is just a title, so I can go ahead and turn that off. But for an effect, you can designate the input just by clicking on the I. And you can have multiple inputs. So for a transition, you'd want to have two inputs. Um, and also, if you have like too many selected on accident, you can just hold Alt and exclusively select one as an input. And they're color coded, so yellow is always background, green is always foreground. And also, if you're designing a transition, I would recommend using these pipe routers because they will actually show up in their own little area right here to make it a lot easier to identify and set them as your inputs. But for titles or generators, you don't really need an input. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this off. And I mean, yeah, like once you start to get the hang of this, it should feel really intuitive. You can even just click right onto the control and change the name. Let's go ahead and just group this one together as well. Uh, quick tip, if you hit L, it'll go ahead and create a label for you. So we'll call this title controls. And you can also hit Alt when you collapse or expand these drop down menus and it will expand or collapse all of them. All right, so next I might want to add my global transform controls. Same thing here. I'm going to select all of these and hit L. So now let's test this out. Let's hit copy, bring it back in here. And there you go. We have these nice, neat, organized labels, exactly how it looks right over here. And over here in the export settings is pretty self-explanatory. You can give your macro a name and you can easily set this as a group or a macro with these two buttons here. 
And I put a copy button here just so that you can kind of quickly, you know, hop into Fusion and test things out to make sure they're working. But when you're ready, you can just download the dot setting file and stick this right in your template folder. And now my template should show up in my titles here. I'll just search for it. And there it is. Or you can also just shift spacebar. There it is. You could even add different pages. So you can do that just by clicking up here and giving it a name, or you can simply drag a whole label or individual controls over to a new page. So this is definitely overkill for a very simple lower third like this, but you can kind of get the idea. If you're building a really complicated macro, you might want to further organize things into separate pages. So now let's go ahead and re-download that and just override this one. And now if I hop back into Resolve and just reset this, now we see these new pages that we've added at the top. Now again, this is really overkill for something simple like this. So let me just show you if I delete these pages, everything gets set right back to where it was originally. So everything's now on the control page. Just gonna go ahead and re-download and override this old one. Hop back into Resolve and reset. And there you go, everything is exactly as it was before. And yeah, that's been a quick overview of Macro Lab. And the nice thing about this being web-based is I can just push out updates and you don't have to worry about reinstalling to make sure that you're up to date. So if you notice anything that's not working or you have any feature requests, I will try to implement them. The best way to contact me is probably my Instagram or my coffee account. Both of those links are going to be in the description. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching.